All right, Sunday morning, maybe the music will bring a few extra ones in. I know about a few problems, and some people that are actually on the way ran into some trouble on the turnpike, my brother and them, pray that they'll be okay. They were trying to get off and get on 95. I don't suppose that's where everybody else is, you think? <laughs> well, let's stand if we can, all right? Anybody who can, if you're not able to, we certainly understand, and it's okay. Father, we pray that you'll bless us today, that you'll anoint us, that you'll give us strength, and you'll give us your glory. And as we go into your word, that you'll anoint your word to our hearts. Bless us now as we sing and worship. And give praise to your name, because you are worthy. Bless these people. Be with people that have needs and difficulties and problems. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody say a good amen. 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 Well, listen. We haven't sang this for a while, but it's still the truth, no matter when or where or how often we sing it. All right? You, you, you don't know what it is, but I do, but you'll get it. It gets sweeter as the days go by.
them, but let's just sing that little word, hallelujah. And let's just say thank you, Jesus, because God answers the prayers of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it that way. Thank you, Jesus.
All right. Someone killed them in, a, I guess, a, some kind of a situation. Lots of that kind of stuff happens. It's a heartbreak. Pray for John and Pearl. No, they're well. Yes, but they're on, they're on the way. But they're caught. There was a wreck on the on the on the turnpike. We, we said that just before you came in, they were wreck on the turnpike. So, so you could pray for him. He's going to try to get her on 95. <laughs> He's on the way. Amen. Pray for Norm, and God continues to give him strength and help him. He's got some aches and pains and troubles, but he's faithful if he can, and keep praying. Virginia will be coming back pretty soon, I think, right? Maybe uh, pray for her as she travels. Amen. But just cast it on the Lord right now. Just say, Jesus, remember these needs. Help, Lord. Time of, in time of trouble. Bring your mercy, Jesus. Bring your grace. Hallelujah. Touch everyone that's afflicted and hurting and in pain and some kind of suffering, Jesus. Take care of it, Lord. You are, you, we, we, have, we have read that, you, that in the word that nothing's impossible. Nothing's too hard for you. With men it's impossible. With God all things are possible. Lord, we might be discouraged in the flesh, but give us power in the spirit and encouragement in the spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, bring us to a place of service. A place of trust place of faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Just before we say amen, David said, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. How do you like that? In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. That God hears us this morning. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God hears us. Today is BGMC Sunday, and uh, the, the, the giving for the thousand dollar pledge is up to seven hundred dollars. I think the last time it was six fifty. We mentioned it last week or something before. I don't know. Seven hundred. Just praying the rest will come in. And uh, we've got a short video two-part video that we're going to go ahead and we're going to show it here in just a few minutes. It's got a, uh, a great story, a great story of how God works, uh, just in case you forgot that God works. So uh, also, uh, you know, we mentioned that we needed to try to get a little extra help, and some of you have already responded, and we appreciate that because we've got to have the inspection done, not because we want to, and it's not the insurance company, it's the city that's 10 years for every 40-year-old. 40 year or older building, and then every 10 years after that, they got to get another inspection. And that's going to cost, it looks like the inspection is $1,600. And, uh, and then there's, a, you got to pay the city $400 to accept the paperwork from the engineer. We do have an engineer, I think, that gives us a break. Last time he gave us a great break, and he might be giving us one. We don't know exactly, and I'll let you know and pass it on to you. But uh, we have an engineer that's a, that is a Christian and knows some people that we know. and. And he, uh, he's also not only, you have to have structural and electrical report. He's both. He's certified in both areas. Thank goodness. I only have to pay one person. So that was, oh, that was great, you know. So anyway, uh, about a year ago, maybe just a little bit more, we had this problem, but it came up yesterday. And it was time to turn on the air conditioner up there. And I know how everything's supposed to sound. And it sounded right inside, but it didn't sound 
right outside. I says, nothing? No sound at all isn't a good sound. And uh, somebody had uh, come by, and I know that they probably have an operation going, and they, they cut all the copper pipes on the outside that goes from the air handler to the compressor, and that, of course that damages other things. And a big problem now with the way, did you say Freon had gone up 10 times? Yeah. Yeah. That's a real problem right there because you lose the Freon. That's a big expense, you know. You don't talk about the coolant. So, uh, and I'm not kidding you now. I said, no, come on, give us, he said 50 cents. I said, give us a real exact estimate. You, you know, I said to the air conditioner man, and this is, um, you know, the guy that, that does a good job and does work that nobody else would even do. And got it taken care of so we could be a little more comfortable this morning, although we did have some air conditioning, but not that one. But he said, no, no kidding, he said $2. It's worth $2 what they, what they cut. $2! I, I said, man, look, call me up and I'll give you a better deal. I'll give you a lot more, as a matter of fact. I'll give you almost as much as we had to pay. So, so not, not to scare anybody, and at first you might think, just for copper, but there, there was uh, six hours of work and some dryers and different things and parts would be replaced, so it came to 1600 That's not true, 1650 but, but God's working already, you know, and so, and, 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 we, and we're going to try to, you know, people say, you got to do something to protect it. It's not so easy because even though the air conditioning is protected because somebody stole the compressor numbers and numbers of years ago, and so Fred's put the cage on there, but at some point, pipes have got to leave that and come inside, and they've got to be in the open, and you got to figure out a way, and of course, like Fritz, uh, another air conditioning man who this guy's connected with that did, did this work, he said, you, you can't ever really stop somebody, but you want to discourage them, say, ah, this is not worth the trouble, we'll go next door or someplace else. We don't want them to go next door and bother anybody else. But it's, it, it, it's just, and it got me upset, and then I had to ask the Lord to forgive me. For saying, God, you know, and then I prayed over it, and you know, I just got to put a hedge around it. And, but you know, we don't know, but you'll find out how God works in, in this video that we're gonna have. But anyway, uh, you, you can understand, you guys, you know, you know what troubles are in this world, all kinds of things. And I remember years and years and years ago, when I was very young and going to church in Hollywood, nobody ever did this because we didn't have any air conditioning. Nobody ever cut the lines, ever did nothing, never had any work, you know. How many remember when you didn't have that? Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad we got it, but boy. So how many have, have had any car problems? <laughs> Troubles and trials and different things. Hey, oh, really? Yeah, all yeah, right. Anyway, well, uh, Esther, do you want me to take up the offering and then we'll do that? Or, uh, uh, because I think everybody will be here and no, nobody will be leaving for children's church as it is. So why don't we go ahead and take up the offering and then we'll do the video, okay? That way the musicians don't have to make two trips. Come on down, fellas. Appreciate it. I uh, I I asked. You know, Scott was by doing his faithful work and keeping things up on the outside of the yard. We were there talking to the air conditioner man. I said, "How do how do people sleep at night?" Was that you, Scott? That said quite well. Yeah. Some people sleep quite well at night. They don't care. It's hard to understand, isn't it? Hard to understand. You know, if you want evil to make sense or sin to make sense, I guess it's just not going to happen, right? not going to happen but you know you know what you know what I'm gonna tell you something else too I don't know if I'm making progress or I don't have any you know my first thought wasn't hatred or animosity or I mean but was why you know why I said that somebody has to think and I understand that it's not just just ours they, you know and there's other people that had to be affected something like this isn't somebody just stealing something arbitrarily it's probably a a whole operation going. You're not, gonna, you're not gonna show up at the place the guy's gonna buy the copper pump most, most of the time for two dollars, but the guy has a whole load that, that people have gathered and you know when, when vigilantes out working, right? Pirates. You know, the other night in an old uh, replay of a Shark Tank episode, there was a guy that said he was an inventor and he had been in a thousand inventions. He had something that would create a vortex with seawater, and it would cause, uh, you know, a force that would turn paddles to generate electricity, and it would also, as a byproduct, extract gold from the seawater. <laughs> it 
So uh, one of the guys that was the investor, you know, Kevin O'Leary, the guy they call Mr. Wonderful, he said to the guy, he says, how, how long will you be visiting Earth? <laughs> People are still looking for gold, even a little bit here and there. And anyway, it's just kind of sad. Well, Terry, speaking of gold, pray. And you know what? We got problems. People here have problems. A lot of people pray that God will anoint all of these things that we offer. And then he brings into our life the finances and multiply it. Jesus fed 5,000 with just some loaves and fishes. Amen. Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we're truly thankful for this, for this time that we can spend in your house, Lord. And Lord, we know that us as humans, we all have problems, Lord, and we just lift them up to your feet because you're the great physician, the great air conditioner, the repair person, Lord. And the, you know, we just, just thank you for all the wonderful blessings that you've bestowed upon each one of us, Lord. Lord, we, we can never, ever repay you back for the, Thank you, Jesus. the love and the kindness that you've shown by sacrificing your son to die on the cross for us. Lord, we just ask you to you, keep that in our hearts and our minds as we go through this week and to do your work and your will. Lord, we just ask you to bless us offer Thank you, Jesus. This week, may I glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Some villages in these mountains can only be reached by footpaths. There are no roads leading into them. Assemblies of God churches in this area can be reached only by walking over steep mountain trails. Walking these trails is very exhausting. One often becomes so weary that he has just one desire, to find a stretch of level ground where he can sit and rest. Sometimes, even when you sit down, you have to brace yourself to avoid falling down the mountainside. The Taiwanese mountains are very beautiful and full of lush green plants, but they are also very treacherous. Frequently, masses of loose rocks fall without warning. One day, missionary David Plymeyer was traveling alone on one of these trails with a pack on his back. He was headed toward a village where he was going to conduct a church service. For no special reason, he suddenly stopped to rest, even though at that moment he wasn't particularly tired. David had just stopped, removed his backpack, and sat down to rest when he heard the sound of falling rocks. The rocks were falling just beyond the place where he sat. He waited until the echo of the sound had died away, then again hoisted the pack onto his back. As he made his way across the stretch of trail, now strewn with fallen rocks, he realized that if he had not stopped to rest, he would have been struck by some of the rocks. Even the smaller rocks would have killed him. Thankful for the escape, David continued his journey to the village. The little rustic chapel, built of bricks and timber with a tile roof, was full of mountain Taiwanese people who were waiting for him to minister to them. Two years later, David was in the United States on deputation. One Sunday morning, he spoke in an Assemblies of God church in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. At the end of the service, a member of the church came to speak to him. David had never met this man, and the man knew David only as a name on the list of missionaries that his church supported. The man asked David, was there any time during your last term where your life was in danger? David could think of various dangers through which he had passed, but his mind immediately returned to the day when he had so narrowly escaped from the falling rocks. Yes, he answered and he told the man about what had happened during his journey through the mountains. When David finished the story, the man said to him, One day I was suddenly overcome with a heavy burden to pray for your safety. Can you tell me what it was? David asked. When the man answered, and David compared the date of his experience with the date the man had prayed, he realized that the man had been impelled to pray for David's safety just at the time when he had stopped to rest on that mountain trail. Surely the Lord caused David to stop in answer to the prayer of this man who is on the other side of the world.
than what we can imagine. But he wants to use people who are willing, and that's why I believe kids who are willing to serve God can do anything. It, we just gotta give them an opportunity. So here's your opportunity. In what way are you able to serve God? Can you raise money for BGMC? Can you share Jesus with your friends by inviting them to church? Can you pray for missionaries all over the world? I believe you can do all those things and much more. So what are you waiting for? Let's help out these missionaries and start serving God however we can. Oh yeah, don't forget, Go 360. You probably re remember that uh, Taiwan is the island of Formosa where the Chinese nationalist government went when the communists took over the mainland. Was it, was it Chiang Kai-shek that was uh, head of the government and they went there? And of course, terrible things happened in mainland China, but uh, with the help of the United States and other countries, Formosa and Taiwan has continued on. A lot of people living on that small island, but they, they first uh, you know, went there with the government. There was people there before, but it was a terrible thing. You know, somebody has trouble believing that people kill. And would, and would anybody try to kill large numbers of people? And of course, when you, when you hear about countries that kill their own people, I mean, let's face it, the, 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 the Chinese communists, millions of people they killed. And, and the communists in Russia, they killed millions of their own people. And Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, and this is not criticizing them, but at the end of World War II, they sat down with somebody that towards the end joined the Allies. Stalin, the dictator. Isn't that something? A communist country, you know, all about the people has a dictator. Oh, he, he didn't call himself that. How many, they, they figured he might have killed nine million plus Russian people. The world didn't just get bad, folks, is what I'm saying. But keep praying, keep working. A lot of times people, too, wonder, I was listening to the story about David Plymeyer, and people say, well, why, why did God have to have somebody pray? And I mean, God knew David had a problem and he was going to take care of him. But see, the reason why God does it that way is because that builds faith. When somebody realizes God used them to be part of that story around the other side of the world, and then he tells that story, that testimony, it builds faith in other people. That God is not forgetting about you. If you ever feel like you should pray about something, you do it. Amen? Middle of the day, middle of the night, if God wakes you up or... Taps you on the shoulder and says, pray, pray, amen. Preaching some great sermons, not my sermons, but their sermons in the book of Acts. Preaching about their great sermons. And we had gotten to where Peter was going to be willing to go into the house of Cornelius, the Roman soldier, the Gentile. He had, he had accepted the Jewish teaching, but he was still a Gentile. And uh, Peter said, if it was up to me a few days ago, I wouldn't even come here. But the Lord has shown me that if he calls something clean, I shouldn't call it unclean. And then he's going to preach in chapter 10 and we we jumped ahead a little bit to show you something astonishing and then in 11 chapter 11 he's going to go back and defend his ministry to the gentiles to the church go back to the people there who couldn't understand what was happening and then uh, i believe while there's going to be a lot of people preaching and a lot of things going on and i don't think we're going to get to it but i i can't say exactly how things are going to happen. I listened to a, they, they, on face, Facebook they have a, a, a memories they'll bring up and you can decide if you want to post them again. And one of them was a sermon from back in 2016 and I was listening to it a little bit and I was explaining I was in a series and I said, you know, I don't even know when a regular sermon ends, how much more do I not know when a series ends? We just have to preach and just leave it with the Lord. But I kind of like doing a series because you don't have to go to a certain place. We can just pick it up the Lord willing next week. But I think the next actual sermon is going to be in chapter 13, just in case we lay some groundwork for it. But this is after Paul and Barnabas are called to their first missionary journey. And Paul's going to be preaching on the first Sabbath in Antioch, Pisidia. Speaking of names, you know, there's a lot of Antiochs. Not just one. This is why it says Antioch and Pisidia. When I saw the word Pisidia, although it's pretty much pronounced the way it looks, but, but somebody said just recently that the person who put the R, 
the first R in February, the first R is the same guy that created the spelling for Wednesday. <laughs> but some of these Bible names are a little bit tough, but we'll, we'll work on them. But so, so Peter walks in and Cornelius met him and uh, fell down before him and was actually giving him honor and glory and praise. But Peter said, listen, I'm just a man. See, and he found there were a lot of people there. And he, and he made it clear to them, I pointed out last week in, in chapter 10, verse 28, you know that it's unlawful. Not only is he saying, I don't do it, but it's unlawful for a man who's a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. This uh, crowd in Jerusalem might have been stricter than many Jews were. The apostles might have even been stricter about this in the first church than many Jews were because you have to ask yourself, how do these Gentile people become Jewish converts if some Jew doesn't take a, pay attention to them? But maybe they follow certain guidelines. It's interesting that the Jewish people in the New Testament times are like Christians in the New Testament times. They pick what laws they want to obey from the Old Testament and what laws they don't want to obey. You notice that? And of course, don't even talk about it as time went on. There's so, there's so many branches to Judaism and what you can believe and what you don't have to believe, and that's fine. A lot of it's cultural. And, of course, that's happened to Christianity, some parts of Christianity, but not, 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 not true faith, not true service to God. It is what it is. Thus saith the Lord. But one thing about it, not to criticize Peter, because he's facing some new experiences here, and God had to give him that vision to show him that God was making some changes. When it does come time to preach, he's going to preach the, the, the truth. He's going to preach about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He's going to preach about the Lord. See, Cornelius explained that he was fasting and a man told him that God had heard his prayer that God had recognized what he had done and he told me specifically see God could have just sent Peter but see how this is a little bit like the David Plymer thing God tells somebody to tell somebody or wakes up somebody or gives somebody a vision go to Joppa call Simon Peter he will be at the house of Simon the Tanner and he'll tell you something. And so I did it immediately. We pointed out how important it was. A lot of people wonder how could God so quickly bless Cornelius. Well, Cornelius was not only a man of faith, he was a man of obedience. Whatever God told him to do, that's what he did. Immediately, immediately excuse me, I said to you, and you have come, and you've done well that you have come. And we're here before God to hear the things that are commanded you of God. Well, what a responsibility on the preacher. He said, I'm going to trust you, Peter, to tell you what God wants me to hear. What a great responsibility. Are you ready if God uses you like that? Are you ready? You think the church is ready? You think all of God's people are ready to preach the truth? If, if God says somebody's going to hear the truth, then I'm going to let you tell them the truth. And that person says, I know you're going to tell me the truth. I've mentioned it before, but within the 24 hour span. During the evening hours I went to see, you know, I, I, I know her name, Pete's wife that, was, that died there in the, in the, in the, down by our general. Wanda, Wanda, right. She was dying and she was in a coma. Pete Hale asked me if I'd go see her. He said he didn't know if she'd know I was there. She'd been in church some, and things, things are not going well, you know, we won't go into the details, but it was, it's a sad story. There's no reason to think that she was serving the Lord like, like, any, like, like she should. There was just lots of problems. And so there she was, not able to recognize anything, seemed to be in a coma. So I said, I'm just gonna pray. And while I was praying, all of a sudden she shouted out, Pastor, I heard you're preaching. I was shocked. She said, I, I was there in church. I heard it. And I want you to know that I believe it and I'm ready to meet the Lord. I'll never forget that. The only reason God did that was so I would know. She was ready. God could take her. She didn't, she didn't need me to know, but God wanted to encourage me. But she said, I heard your preaching. I often wondered if she did before that, because it didn't seem like it. 
You don't ever worry about it. You, you be ready to preach the word like, like Simon said. Like Cornelius said, Simon Peter, Cornelius said, like, like Paul said later, Peter opened his mouth and he said, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. What a great statement. I'm beginning to see that. He, ha he asked people that fear him everywhere and people that work righteousness for him everywhere and they're accepted by him. And the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he's the Lord of all. I'm saying that was published throughout Judea and Galilee after John the Baptist introduced this. And God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He starts preaching the gospel right back in the beginning. Well, the Holy Spirit with power. Jesus went about doing good. He doesn't know for sure how much he knows about Jesus. So he's preaching about Jesus. That's why he's there. He's not there to remind him what Leviticus said. I think Cornelius already knows what Leviticus says. He's not there to remind him about what to do on the Sabbath day, he already knows. He's there to tell them about Jesus. Get the main point right. See, God was with Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, we as apostles, talk about Peter and the other apostles, we're witnesses of what he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. And they, and they crucified him. But God raised him up on the third day. And there were witnesses there. We ate with him and we drank with him after he rose from the dead. Did you know that was in the Bible in verse 41? We ate and drank with Jesus after he rose from the dead. And he told us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one who was ordained to be the judge of the living and the dead. And to give the prophets witness, the Old Testament witness, Cornelius, that through his name, if you believe in him, you shall receive remission of sins. Now he's preaching the sermon. I, I jumped ahead to this to get this in before we finish last week. While Peter was still preaching these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them. These people probably didn't know hardly anything about Jesus. And I'm sure they didn't know anything about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure they didn't know about the Holy Spirit. Although the Holy Spirit had been working in Cornelius' life. You don't have to know everything for it to be happening. The time when you need to start filling in the blanks and learn some things and grow in grace and knowledge. Grace and knowledge. But grace will do until you get to the knowledge. If it's real grace, because God won't let you get off track. If you don't know the truth, God will send somebody like Peter to tell you the truth. He won't send you a false. Because the people there, the Jewish, the Jewish people that were Christians, Peter and his crowd, they were astonished. They saw the gift of the Holy Spirit on Gentiles. And they were astonished. I mean, maybe God going to save them, but I mean, they, they, they're getting the same experience. We even know about it. And the reason why they knew it is because they specifically heard them speak with these languages and magnify God. And Peter said, well, that's pretty much got it. Got it. Uh, case closed. Case closed. We need to baptize these people because they have received the Holy Spirit just like we did. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now there's that sermon, and normally I'm just preaching the sermons, but I, I want to talk about what's taking place here, because it's not a sermon exactly, but Peter has to preach. These Christians who were Jewish, it says they contended with him. They contended with him, disputed with him. You went in to men that were unclean. I mean, we haven't seen anything canceling out that spiritual hygiene business in the Old Testament yet. That's, what, that's basically what they were saying. You would have think they might have figured that out. Jesus had a tendency to, to not be afraid of Gentiles, right? Not be afraid of Samaritans and, and remember the Syrophoenician woman? He said she had great faith. But they weren't always paying attention. I didn't quite get the point. But of course, what are you going to say? You're going to, you're going to say, look. See, this is repeated again. We already have the details. Luke writes it again as the Holy Spirit leads him because it's important to know that it's a done deal. And it's not going to solve the problem because there's still going to be trouble down the line. They're going to be slow to open up their hearts completely to everybody. The Jerusalem church is going to be slow to understand the place of the Gentiles. It's hard for us to understand that. They're going to be slow. 
the world has had uh, misconceptions that people have carried. This is based on the, uh, the understanding that they had of the word of God, but that's not the way it was because even in the Old Testament, I mean, in the line of Jesus, there were people brought in who were Gentiles. I'm not going to start preaching that now, but you know there were people in the Old Testament that got into the line of David that were not even Jewish. So Peter's explaining this to them. And uh, he told about the three men coming and how he went to Cornelius' house. And the Spirit told him to go with them. He said, a man had come to his house, an angel, told him to call for me. He said, there was, there was supernatural confirmation here. See, he's going to tell you these words. He's going to bring you the knowledge of how to be saved. And he says, and as I spoke, see, the Holy Spirit fell on them. I remember, I remember what, 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 what the Lord said. John would baptize with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So God gave them the same gift as he did to us. Who was I? Now here, here it is. This is a great line. Take this one home with you. Who was I that I could withstand God? No matter what I thought, what I believed, what I interpreted to be right, how it had been yesterday, who was I that I could withstand God? I saw the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And if he leads and guides into all truth, everything he does is the truth. And they didn't know anything about this. They didn't know what, what the sign would be and what you're supposed to do. This was the real thing. He said, I knew it was the real thing. And I, and I know that he knew it because it happened and he heard them speaking. But he also in his heart would have a confirmation that it was of God. Because when God moves, you feel the confirmation. I believe that God's still touching people today, don't you? When they heard this, he said they became silent. And they said, well, God has granted repentance to life to the Gentiles. It, it, it doesn't say a lot here, and, and, and rightly so, because they, they, they did accept it, but they still had problems. Later on, Paul's going to have some trouble, and Peter hasn't quite got it totally figured out. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, the Lord willing, and the time goes on as we keep preaching. But you remember when we talked about the great sermon that Stephen preached, it said because of the persecution that came about due to Stephen, that the Christians were scattered. The men and women of God were scattered. And they were preaching the word of God to nobody but only to the Jews at that point, it said in verse 19. And then it talks about some of these men were of Cyprus and Cyrene. They came to Antioch and they spoke to the Grecians there and preached the Lord Jesus. See, reaching out to the Gentiles. The hand of the Lord was upon them. Great number of people believed. See, we don't have these sermons, but they preach great sermons. And so the people back in Jerusalem heard about what was happening. And so this is all tied in, see, with what they're finding out about Cornelius and what Peter did. And so they sent Barnabas down there to Antioch to go down and see the grace of God and to exhort people that no matter who you were, whether you were Jewish or Gentile, that you would have a purpose of heart that would reach unto the God and hold on to God. And now this is the Barnabas that we're going to see going with the Apostle Paul on the first missionary journey. He's going to do some preaching with Paul. He said he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith. And people was added to the Lord. And Barnabas was led to look for Saul of Tarsus and he found him in Antioch. And they went there for a whole year and taught many people. And what I wanted to get to this morning, at least before we stopped, I wanted to read this. It says in verse 26 at the end, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Christians. That's the first time it comes up. And it's kind of stuck. And it should only mean what it means. It shouldn't be accepted for a lot of things, but it is. But that's not the fault of the word. People of Christ. What, what, that's a great name, huh? Jesus people. 
Christians, people who follow Jesus, people who believe in Jesus, people who do what Jesus tells them to do, people who honor Jesus, people who trust the Lord. You know, we're not going to go into it, but there's going to be a prophecy from a prophet. That there's going to be a famine in the world. When Claudius Caesar was the emperor in Rome, and there was going to be a need to bring relief to the people that lived in Jerusalem, in Judea. And that's how Barnabas and Saul of Tarsus is going to go back with supplies. They had kind of like a, a hard time. Hard time. Famine. Sickness, persecution. People say we know we're in the last days because of all of that. But yes, but not because of all of that. Today it's been, been that way. The world has been filled with famine and persecution and sickness and hard times. And Jesus said these are the, the beginning of all these things. And they're going to take place. And I want you to do several things. You can meet people's needs and you can help people. You can encourage people. You can pray for people. But I want you to preach the gospel. I don't want you to be available for what I ask you to do. And if I tell you to pray, you might be praying for somebody's life in Taiwan that you don't even know about. There's people that have come to God and they, the people that were responsible for it ultimately, they don't know about it. I've seen this many times, but I saw a preacher's picture online the other day that you don't remember his name, and I don't know it now. I don't know it now. But he was responsible for D.L. Moody getting saved, and then Sunday being saved. Then went down the line, and of course it was Moody and Sunday and and uh, Mordecai I. Ham and Billy Graham got saved in Charlotte. The Mordecai I. Ham's preaching, and so it ends up with Billy Graham. That guy didn't know hardly any of those people, but he didn't care. I mean, he cares. If he knew what he didn't know, you know, you don't, you don't say, God, what's, how's it going to work out? Sometimes he lets you know the whole story. Sometimes part of the story, maybe none of the story. But what do you do? What did Peter do? What did Cornelius do? I, we did what God told us to do. If you do what God tells you to do, it's going to be all right. Amen. Do what God tells you to do. A lot of people aren't doing that today, but I know that you believe that. God bless you. So what you want to do is you want to read over a little bit about Herod killing James, about Peter being arrested. We're not, we'll mention those things, but uh, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to preach these sermons. And then if you've got time uh, and you're still going, you can look over what, how, what Paul's first recorded sermon. He's done a lot of preaching already, but the first recorded sermon in chapter 13, beginning with verse 14, Paul preaches on the first Sabbath in Antioch in the city. Okay, God bless you. Let's stand together. Let's remember the needs that we had. We mentioned that some of those were unspoken. And I'm sure Joe wants us to pray, especially for him, that the Lord would help him and give him guidance about things. And maybe you all want to join. Anybody else have an unspoken request? I feel the power of God is going to touch people. Yeah, God, God can do miracles, you know. God can do miracles. I've heard of so many people that have been, have been uh, saved delivered the doctors gave up on I'm not going to start telling stories because if I do I'll, I'll, be, I'll go too long but God God can override override uh, the opinion of the doctors and not, not, even when they're accurate God is in charge Father please help us today we call time of trouble. Help it with our needs and our problems, Lord. Everyone here and that we know about, that we care about. Like Jesus.
Thank you. 